In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Dios nuestro, reunidos para celebrar la Santísima Cena en la que tu Hijo unigénito, unigénito antes de entregarse a la muerte, confió a la Iglesia el nuevo y eterno sacrificio, banquete pascual de su amor. Concédenos que de tan sublime misterio brote para nosotros la plenitud del amor y de la vida. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Lectura del Libro del Éxodo En aquellos días, el Señor les dijo a Moisés y a Aarón en tierra de Egipto, Este mes será para ustedes el primero de todos los meses y el principio del año. Díganle a toda la comunidad de Israel, el día 10 de este mes tomará cada uno un cordero por familia, uno por casa. Si la familia es demasiado pequeña para comérselo, se lo junte con los vecinos y elija un cordero adecuado al número de personas y a la cantidad que cada cual pueda comer. Será un animal sin defecto, mancho, de un año, cordero o cabrito. Lo guardarán hasta el día 14 del mes, cuando toda la comunidad de los hijos de Israel lo inmolará al atardecer. Tomarán la sangre y rociarán las dos jambas y el dintel de la puerta de la casa donde vayan a comer este cordero. Esa noche comerán la carne asada a fuego, comerán panes sin levadura y hierbas amargas. Comerán así, con la cintura ceñida, las sandalias en los pies, un bastón en la mano y a toda prisa, porque es la Pascua, es decir, el paso del Señor. Yo pasaré esa noche por la tierra de Egipto y heriré a todos los primogénitos del país de Egipto, desde los hombres hasta los ganados. Castigaré a todos los dioses de Egipto, yo el Señor. La sangre les servirá de señal en las casas donde habitan ustedes. Cuando yo vea la sangre, pasaré de largo y no habrá entre ustedes plaga exterminadora. Cuando hiera yo, a la tierra de Egipto. Ese día será para ustedes un memorial y lo celebrarán como fiesta en honor del Señor. De generación en generación celebrarán esta festividad como institución perpetua. Palabra de Dios. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les he transmitido, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que iba a ser entregado, tomó pan en sus manos y pronunciando la acción de gracias, lo partió y dijo, Este es mi cuerpo, que se entrega por ustedes. 
hagan esto en memoria mía. Lo mismo hizo con el cáliz después de cenar, diciendo, Este cáliz es la nueva alianza que se sella con mi sangre. Hagan esto en memoria mía siempre que beban de él. Por eso, cada vez que ustedes comen de este pan y beben de este cáliz, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que vuelva. Palabra de Dios. Dominus vobiscum, Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, He rose from the supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he put water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I'm doing you do not understand now but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and, and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, For indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to you to follow, so that as I have as I have done for you, you should also do. Gospel of the Lord. El Santísimo Sacramento estará expuesto para adoración después de esta misa hasta las nueve y media. Hasta las nueve y media. Y favor de acercarse al comulgatorio y arrodillarse hoy para comulgar. Gracias. 
Today, the Blessed Sacrament will be exposed after Mass for adoration until 9 p.m. We also ask that you please approach the altar rail and kneel down to receive communion today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Thursday is a day of bright sadness. Today we enter into a profound mystery, mingling joy and grief that belongs to the living memory of the Church. And to this mystery belongs the inst institution of the Most Holy Eucharist and the Holy Priesthood. But to this mystery also belongs the agony of our Lord and Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane. Today, on Holy Thursday, the Lord enters into the pitch-black night of illusion and death in order to overthrow the powers of darkness with the light of God's mercy and truth. There's a wonderful novel called Marianela, written by the Spanish author Benito Perez Caldos. Marianela is the protagonist. She is a young woman in a village in Spain who has an immense capacity for friendship, goodness, and love. She has a boyfriend named Pablo who happens to be blind. Marianela cooks for Pablo. She reads to him, washes his clothes, takes long walks with him, and is his constant companion and friend. One day, Pablo goes off to the city to see doctors there who can treat his blindness. And when he returns to his village, for the first time in his life, he sees Marianela, the young woman who loves him more than anything else in the world. Now that he is able to see, Pablo realizes that there are other young women in the village who are prettier and more attractive than Marianela. So he goes off and marries one of them. What's ironic in this story is that when Pablo could physically see, he was really blind to truth and reality. But when he, he was physically blind, Pablo could see the beauty, goodness, and love of Marianela. Holy Thursday and the events of Holy Week remind us that without the vision of faith, appearances often deceive, as Pablo was deceived. The vision of faith opens our eyes to see what is true, what is good, and what is beautiful. Through the medicines of his Paschal mystery, the Lord wishes to remove our blindness so that we can see the world through his eyes, through his gaze of love and mercy. At the Last Supper, our Lord washes the feet of his apostles and gives us the new commandment to love one another as he loves us. This Last Supper recalls the first Passover in Egypt, the night of liberation in which the children of Israel were delivered from slavery. The Lord comes to set us free so that we might set others free, or rather that he might free others through our words and actions. At the end of every Mass, we are sent into the world, commissioned by the Lord to serve other people. We are to wash the feet of others, both physically and spiritually. St. John Chrysostom, our Father among the Saints, tells us that there are two altars. There is, in the first place, the altar here in church. And towards this altar, we show deep reverence we bow in front of it. We decorate this altar with silver and gold and flowers. We cover it with precious hangings. But, continues St. John, there is another altar, an altar that we encounter every day on which we can offer sacrifice at every moment. And yet towards this second altar, an altar which God himself has made, we show no reverence at all. We treat it with contempt, we ignore it. And what is this second altar? It is, says St. John Chrysostom, the poor, the suffering, those in need, the homeless, those who are in distress. At any moment, he says, when you go out from the church, there you will see an altar on which you can offer sacrifice, a living altar, 
made by Christ himself. So the washing of the feet is not a piece of pious nostalgia from the past that has no bearing on our lives today. It is not just a symbolic gesture that the priest or bishop performs at Holy Thursday Mass. Rather, it is the Christian life itself. It is what we have signed up for when we were baptized and when we renew our baptismal vows at the Easter Vigil. It is what we sign up for when we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. We commit ourselves to serving him in the poorest of the poor and in the sick and the suffering. We commit ourselves to getting our hands dirty. Holy Thursday invites us to make the pain of other people our own. We must not be afraid to enter into their mourning and suffering and grief. Through the bright sadness of Holy Thursday, we enter into the passion of Christ and the glory of his resurrection. In the entrance antiphon for today's Mass, we joyfully and confidently proclaim, we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. El Jueves Santo es día de brillante tristeza, brillante tristeza. Hoy entramos en un misterio profundo entre la alegría y el dolor que pertenece a la memoria viva de la Iglesia. A este misterio pertenece la institución de la Santísima Eucaristía y el Santo Sacerdocio. Pero a este misterio también pertenece la agonía de nuestro Señor y Salvador en el huerto de Gethsemane. Hoy, Jueves Santo, el Señor entra en la noche oscura de la alusión y la muerte para poder derrocar los poderes de las tinieblas con la luz de la misericordia y la verdad de Dios. Hay una maravillosa novela llamada Marianela, escrita por el autor español Benito Pérez Galdós. Marianela es la protagonista. Es una joven de un pueblo en España que tiene una inmensa capacidad de amistad, bondad y amor. Tiene un novio llamado Pablo, que es ciego. Marianela cocina para Pablo, le lee, le lava la ropa, da largos paseos con él y es su constante compañera y amiga. Un día Pablo se va a la ciudad a ver médicos que pueden tratar su ceguera. Y cuando regresa a su pueblo por primera vez en su vida, ve a Marianela, la joven que lo ama más que a nada en el mundo. Y ahora que puede ver, Pablo se da cuenta de que hay otras mujeres jóvenes en el pueblo que son más bonitas y atractivas que Marianela. Entonces Pablo se va y se casa con una, una de ellas. Lo irónico aquí es que cuando Pablo podía ver físicamente, estaba realmente ciego a la verdad y a la belleza. Pero cuando estaba físicamente ciego, Pablo pudo ver la belleza, la bondad y el amor y cariño de Marianela. El Jueves Santo y los acontecimientos de la Semana Santa nos recuerdan que sin la visión de la fe, las apariencias engañan a menudo. Muchas veces. La visión de la fe abre nuestros ojos para ver la verdad, lo que es bueno, lo que es hermoso. Por medio de las medicinas de su misterio pascual, el Señor desea eliminar nuestra ceguera para que podamos ver el mundo por medio de sus ojos, por medio de su mirada misericordiosa. En la última cena, nuestro Señor lava los pies de sus apóstoles y nos da el nuevo mandamiento de amarnos unos a otros como Él nos ama. Esta última cena recuerda la primera Pascua en Egipto, la noche de la liberación, en la que los hijos de Israel fueron liberados de la esclavitud. El Señor viene a liberarnos para que podamos liberar a los demás, o más bien, para que Él pueda liberar a los demás por medio de nuestras palabras y acciones. Al final de cada misa, somos enviados al mundo, comisionados por el Señor para servir a los demás. Hemos de lavar los pies de los demás, tanto físicamente como espiritualmente. 
San Juan Crisóstomo nos dice que hay dos altares. Está en primer lugar el altar de la iglesia y hacia este altar mostramos una profunda reverencia. Nos inclinamos frente a él. Decoramos este altar con plata y oro y flores. Lo cubrimos con preciosos tapices. Pero sigue San Juan, hay otro altar, un altar que encontramos todos los días, en el que podemos ofrecer sacrificios en cualquier momento. Y sin embargo, hacia este segundo altar, un altar que Dios mismo ha hecho, no mostramos ninguna reverencia. Lo tratamos con desprecio, lo ignoramos. ¿Y qué es este segundo altar? Este altar, dice San Juan Crisóstomo, consiste en atender a los pobres, a los que sufren, a los necesitados, a los desemparados, a todos los que están en peligro. En cualquier momento dice, cuando salgas de la iglesia verás un altar en el que puedes ofrecer sacrificios, un altar vivo, hecho por Cristo mismo. Entonces, el lavado de los pies no es pieza de nostalgia piadosa del pasado, que no tiene relación con nuestras vidas hoy. No es solo un gesto simbólico que el sacerdote o obispo realiza en la misa del Jueves Santo. Es la vida cristiana misma. Es a lo que nos hemos apuntado cuando nos bautizamos y cuando renovamos nuestros votos bautismales en la Vigilia Pascual. Es a lo que nos apuntamos cuando recibimos a nuestro Señor en la Sagrada Comunión. Nos comprometemos a servirle en los más pobres de los pobres, y en los enfermos y en los que sufren. El Jueves Santo nos invita a hacer nuestro el dolor ajeno. No debemos tener miedo de entrar en el luto y sufrimiento y dolor de los demás. Por medio de la brillante tristeza del Jueves Santo, entramos en la pasión de Cristo y la gloria de su resurrección. En la antífona de entrada de la misa de hoy, proclamamos con alegría y confianza, debemos gloriarnos en la cruz de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, en quien está nuestra salvación, vida y resurrección, por quien somos salvos y librados. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. El Señor esté con ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad es justo y necesario, es nuestro deber y salvación. Date gracias siempre en todo lugar, Señor Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, por Cristo Señor nuestro, el cual, verdadero y eterno sacerdote, al instituir el sacrificio de la eterna alianza, se ofreció primero a ti como víctima salvadora y nos mandó que lo ofreciéramos como memorial suyo. Cuando comemos su carne inmolada por nosotros, quedamos fortalecidos. Y cuando bebemos su sangre derramada por nosotros, quedamos limpios de nuestros pecados. Por eso con los ángeles y los arcángeles, con los tronos y dominaciones, y con todos los coros celestiales, cantamos sin cesar el himno de tu gloria. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us at the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To 
us also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concede la paz y la unidad. Tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Oremos. Concédenos, Dios Todopoderoso, que así como somos alimentados en esta vida con la cena pascual de tu Hijo, así también merezcamos ser saciados en el banquete eterno. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor.